Welcome to the Aeros Miller New Technology Podcast, where we spend our non-productive time talking about everything drilling tech. I'm Ken Miller. And I'm David Aerdos. And today's episode is about inclination and azimuth ball drilling. Uh, our podcast is sponsored by Gibson Reports. Check out Gibson Reports at gibsonreports.com. They have a great NWD and directional drilling market share report. And remember, you can check our, our podcast out, Season 1 and soon Season 2, on Spotify and iTunes. Just search for Aerdos Miller. So I've been hearing a lot about continuous inclination and azimuth. What is that? So why don't we back up and just start with the basics for the non-NWD nerds out there, right? Yeah. And so um, let's just talk about what inclination and azimuth is, yeah. right? Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to use our handy Zach statue here <laughs> and try and do a little demonstration, right? So as we're drilling a well, right, we drill yeah. the vertical and then the curve and then go to the lateral, right? Yeah. And so um, we have to describe the path, right, that we're drilling, right? Yeah. And so we don't, unfortunately, have underground GPS, so there's no, yeah, there's no way to um, really tell exactly where we are in reference to like satellites or whatever else. Yeah. So we have to rely on a form of navigation called dead reckoning navigation, right? Uh -huh. And the way we do that is we need we need three pieces of information, right? Yeah. We need, well, first of all, we need a tie-in point or a kickoff point, right, yeah. at the surface, mm -hmm. and usually we have that with GPS, right, because yeah. it's like on the surface, sure, right. yeah. yeah. And then after that, we need three pieces of information for, for every further survey station, mm -hmm. right, to, de to describe a path in three-dimensional space, right? Yeah. So we need a depth, right, so uh -huh. the distance of travel. We need, we need an inclination, which is a, a tilt, right, yeah. away from the Earth's gravity vector. And then we need an azimuth, which is a magnetic, usually a magnetic compass reading, right? Yeah. And so if, if, we, if we have um, a bunch of these survey stations, right, we can use that to describe the three-dimensional well path geometry, right? Yeah. And so <clears throat> an inclination, to answer your question directly with all the, all the nonsense, is inclination, I got my little Zach upside down here, is the tilt away from the Earth's gravity vector, right? Yeah. So this would be zero degrees inclination, 45 degrees inclination, 90 degrees mm -hmm. inclination, right? Okay. And then azimuth with respect to, uh, is, is usually with respect to magnetic north, like gyros yeah. will give it to, with you, to give it to you with respect to true north, but most NWD systems use a magnetic sensor, so with respect right. to the magnetic north. And yeah. so azimuth is just what your, if you had a compass out, that's your azimuth, right? So yeah. it's like zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees is south, right? Zero yeah. degrees is north. East is 90 degrees, west is uh, 270 degrees, right? Yep. So that's azimuth mm -hmm. and all the gradations along there. Okay. So that's, that's your measure, right? And so what does it mean when we say continuous? Okay, so usually when we're drilling, right? So let's imagine we're drilling a stand. I'm just going to keep using my little Zach here. I hope it's not too awkward. So um, so usually what we do is we're, we, we, you know, we, we take a survey station, right? Uh -huh. And then we drill forward, right? And then we stop again and we take another yeah. measurement, right? Mm -hmm. And so the reason we, have, we do that is because when you're drilling through the rock, it's, you know, our little Zach here is rotating and bouncing all around and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's really, really hard to figure out what our inclination and azimuth is yeah. while you're under all that rotation and movement and shock and vibe, right? So usually what we right. do is we pause, take the measurement, put it in the survey table, drill a little bit, pause, take the measurement, put it in the survey table over and over again, right? Yeah. So a continuous inclination measurement is, um, or, you know, people call it a bunch of different stuff, right? They could call it, you know, I've, I've heard like 10 different terms thrown around, <laughs> it tends to the extreme, but yeah. I've heard it called continuous inclination and azimuth. I've heard it called um, inclination and azimuth while drilling. Yeah. I've heard it called live inclination and azimuth. I've heard it called rotational inclination and azimuth, and I've yeah. heard it called dynamic inclination and azimuth. So that's like, I don't know how many that is, like five or six, whatever. Yeah. Don't do math on the air, you always embarrass yourself, right? Yeah. So, um, so we're just gonna call it continuous, but for continuous yeah. inclination and azimuth, what we're trying to do is in between our survey stations, while we're drilling ahead, yeah. while we're under rotation, while mm -hmm. we're shocking and vibrating, you know, yeah. under all this stuff, we're still trying to get that measurement, right? We're mm -hmm. still trying to tell what our inclination and azimuth is, right? Right. And um, <clears throat> um, so that's really tough to do because you have to come up with all sorts of fancy mathematical filters to yeah. get rid of that all the, all the rotational all the and vibration and everything. Because yeah. when you when you're in a survey station and you pause, it's, you're still right. You're 100 still. Yeah. No big deal, you know. I mean, I'll turn my Zach upright, and um, uh, it's it's easy to just take a measurement, right? There's no noise in the measurement. I can just right. sample the position of the instrument, right? And mm -hmm. versus the other way around, which is really really complicated. And, and so, you know, why we need that is because, <clears throat> you know, imagine right now, the analogy I like to bring up is imagine you're driving a car, right? And, right. and, and um, so. The way we drill today would be the equivalent of in the automobile world, right? You're on the freeway, you know, you're trying to get from A to B, yeah. and you you look where you're trying to go, you kind of take a gauge, right? Yeah, eyeball it. You, you eyeball it, close your eyes, you know, <laughs> uh, hit the gas pedal, 
go forward for as long as you're comfortable with, like yeah. what you can imagine in your head, right? And then you stop, you hit the brakes, and you can't open your eyes until you hit the brakes, and you have to hit the brakes and stop. Complete stop. Complete stop, right? And you can yeah. open your eyes again and look where you were, and God hope you help you if you hit anything along the <laughs> way, right? And so that's what drilling is like today when we have to take these measurements stand by stand by stand is you're basically drilling blind, right, right? Uh, you know, in between these survey stations. And that's a big problem because you could be, um, you know, going the wrong direction, and then right. you have to wait till maybe 90 nice, feet sir. later sometimes to figure out figure it out right and so yeah. the more measurements we can get all the time like we'd like to open our eyes as much as much as we can while we're driving right right um and so you know driving is a little bit different than drilling but i think yeah. i think the analogy holds right i think so, i think that analogy makes it sound really silly the way that we've been doing it until now i mean if you think about it in car terms you know i think that that's a lot of innovation right like the yeah. better you get at something like when you go back in hindsight it's like oh but yeah. were you guys cavemen right why'd you, you did it like why'd that. you do it like that yeah. right so Um, so we talked about the biggest one, right? Which is, yeah. you know, just being able to keep an eye on where you're going, right? So right. think about how hard it would be to drive with your eyes closed every 30 feet, right? Yeah. And um, so just making less mistakes, going in the wrong direction, having to back up less often, having, you know, we don't have to correct as much because we're, mm. we, we're we're preventing a lot of the, the kick outs that we would have to later correct, right? Um, I think the, another big benefit is that we have a smoother well bore, right? So we reduce right. the micro dog legs or get rid of them entirely. And I know the drilling guys don't care about a smoother well bore, but I think that they get the job done faster because they're making less corrections, right. they break less things, they put less stress on the BHA because they're um, they're not beating up their equipment in a porpoising horrible well bore, right? right. And the same and the same thing also applies to the dry direction equipment as you're running casing and all these other pumps right. and whatever else in there. Uh, that's also better. Um, and then um, another big benefit is uh, this is a measurement we really need for rotary steerables as well, right? Because right. the rotary steerable, you know, it's a smart kind of steering instrument and it's trying to um, hold an inclination, right? And it's yeah. trying to hold an azimuth while it's drilling. And so it really needs, it really, really needs that that kind of measurement, like continu a good continuous inclination and azimuth measurement, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's important. That's right. That critical. It's pretty critical, yeah, yeah. So I, I, a rotary steerable wouldn't work without a good, you know, seeing can see yeah. as algorithm, right? So. Kind of the whole point. Yes. <laughs> so what can we expect in the future? Um, so I, I think right now everyone's just kind of using it as a general trend measurement, right? I yeah. think the biggest thing we're using it for right now is just to keep on path and then if we see ourselves going off, we still stop and and you know correct, right? Right. So I think what everybody's kind of working towards is uh, being able to basically get like some sort of synthetic sort of six axis information, yeah. right? So that we can actually consider um, the uh, the live or, or, or in continuous surveys um, the same as we do a static survey, right? Right. It's probably very you know it's, it's certainly a very valid aspiration. Maybe yeah. maybe a little bit. Let's we'll see if that works out because there's a right. lot of noise in that data. Like it's never going to be as good necessarily. Yeah. But then there's also a lot of arguments the other way that maybe um, as your um, you know, right now when we take static surveys, you have to deal with like BHA sag and it's right. slightly offset and all these other kind of things, right? Maybe yeah. the fact that we're rotating and if we average for long enough and have a smart yeah. enough filter, maybe we can get a better idea of what the well bore actually looks like. So there's yeah. some people who say, okay, well, it can never be as good as a static measurement, but there might be some some truth to the fact that as it gets better, it might actually be better than a static measurement just because it's you're yeah. changing the nature, right? Yeah, you're taking more points and you're more points and and, and the, the BHA is also it's rotating in the hole, right? It's not yeah. slightly off to one side and right. gravity is not affecting it as much because it's all torqued up and yeah. just, it's just be interesting. What what what's to find out, right? Um, yeah. And what was really interesting to me is um, this reminds me of the concept of uh, dithering. You know, so yeah. dithering is an interesting concept, and it was actually discovered, I think, around like World War II. Um, I think around the time they were still using mechanical targeting computers. Yes, so. yeah. So they had mechanical targeting computers on the bombers in World War II, and these were like analog computers that had uh, gears for a lot of the yeah. differential equations and targeting calculations and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, right? So it's an analog computer that's got gearing systems and all this kind of stuff that's yeah. like like just like designed to help you target and get your bomb where it's going, yeah. right? And what was interesting was the engineers found out that um, through building and deploying the systems that they actually worked better in the air than mm -hmm. they did on the ground. And that was that was really perplexing to the engineers at the time. Yeah. Um, and what they found out it was, was that you know while the plane was flying, there was little bits of turbulence and you know vibration and stuff yeah. like that, right? That that what happened is those those mechanical gears, like when they were static, 
sometimes they would get kind of a stickiness yeah. to them or back and forth, right? But when they had a slight amount of vibration on them, they averaged out, it, it, it all averaged out, right? And the, yeah. the mechanical calculator would actually give you more accurate results um, really while, yeah, while flying, right? Yeah. And so that's where the whole concept of dithering came in, and then now that's what it's called now, a dither, right? And so that's yeah. used in all sorts of different you know, engineering applications. Um, but there's a, there's a chance that maybe we get some sort of dithering-like effect from the yeah. fact that we're trying to take these measurements on the fly, and maybe, maybe we, we, we have a more accurate representation of the well bore because of it, like maybe. Like yeah. I'm not saying absolutely, and I'm probably yeah. gonna eat a hat or a sock or something here later when I'm totally wrong, <laughs> but um, maybe. Yeah, that's one of those things that's really counterintuitive. You get better data if you add more noise. <laughs> yes, sometimes that, you know, uh, that, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, right? No, yeah. the noise should be should make it worse, right? Yeah. No, not every time. Most of the time, yes, but yeah. not every time, so. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I'm Ken Miller. And I'm David Erdos. And this has been another episode of the Erdos Miller New Technology Podcast. Please sure be sure to check out our sponsor, Gibson Reports, at gibsonreports.com for awesome NWD and directional drilling market share reports. And make sure you subscribe to our channel uh, and podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, all of the above. If you have any questions, please write to David Ken at podcast at erdosmiller.com and be happy to put them in the show. Thank you.